As you heard John Bolton just say, the sanctions reimposed by the administration are designed to accelerate a steep economic decline in Iran. As special correspondent Reza Saya reports from Tehran, that's leading to anger at the United States and the Iranian regime. Even in the best of times, playing in a street band in Tehran is a hard way to make a living. But members of Rising Star say these days, getting by is harder than ever. This time last year, they each pocketed the equivalent of roughly $100 a day. This year, they're lucky to make 30 bucks a day. Before, we had savings. Now, after daily expenses, not much is left. Every day is a struggle. Things are so bad, they say, they can't replace broken instruments and sometimes they skip a meal. We can't reach our goals. We all have the things we want. We can't have them. Everything is put on hold. The 20-something musicians are among millions of working class Iranians in the grips of one of the country's worst economic crises ever. I am announcing today that the United States will withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal. In the three months since U.S. President Donald Trump pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal, Iran's currency has lost almost half its value. Companies have retreated from their investments in Iran, fearing violating U.S. sanctions. A combination of scarcity and inflation has the cost of real estate, cars, everything from groceries to imported goods soaring. The price of eggs doubled. Apple's popular iPhone X, double. This time, things are awful. I think many won't be able to withstand these conditions. Many will go bankrupt. The struggle is life and death for Sanaz Alabadashti. Sanaz's mother is recovering from breast cancer. Finding and actually buying her mother's life-saving drug, she says, has become increasingly difficult. The fear of cancer is awful. I think about all the people struggling to get their medication. The same thing happened when my mother was diagnosed with cancer during the previous sanctions. U.S. sanctions don't specifically target medicine, but pharmacists say soaring prices and U.S. warnings about banking transactions with Iran is hurting their ability to import the drugs. For some, the pressure is reaching a boiling point. Scattered protests have broken out throughout Iran. Last week, demonstrators marched in Isfahan, Shiraz, Mashhad, and the Tehran suburb of Karaj. The crowds are small, numbering in the hundreds, but increasingly angry. Protesters lash out at Iran's religious clerics and what they call a corrupt system of governance that's long mismanaged and looted Iran's economy. Fueling turmoil in Iran appears to be the Trump administration's objective. The United States is undertaking a diplomatic and financial pressure campaign. In a speech last month, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the pressure campaign is designed to rein in Iran's destabilizing behavior in the region. The Trump administration's other goal, he said, is to help Iranians free themselves from an oppressive regime. The United States hears you. The United States supports you. The United States is with you. That's sheer hypocrisy. <laughs> yeah. Analyst Marzia Javadi says Washington's real intention is regime change, even at the cost of hurting ordinary Iranians. How can you be with people? How can you want to help people by imposing sanctions on the country? Who is hurting by the sanctions? We are not saying that, okay, the situation is perfect here. We are trying, you know, to make it better, improve it. But I, I think the, nobody trusts the United States. The street band Rising Star agrees. In my opinion, they're not out to help. If they succeed in getting rid of this government, then it's only about fulfilling their own agenda. The signing of the nuclear deal with the Obama administration produced hope and optimism in Iran, especially among political moderates. Today, mistrust of the Trump administration spans Iran's political spectrum. At a heated public debate in Tehran last week, pro-reformist Sadegh Ziba Kalam argued in favor of the rule of late Iranian monarch Reza Shah Pahlavi. His conservative opponent, Abbas Salimin Amin, argued against. After the debate, both agreed on one thing, the U.S. should keep out of Iran. It's clear that they want to fool us, of course. They want um, to fool Iran. Those people that they have experienced 
experience yeah. uh, and they know the history, of course, they won't accept this. The biggest mistake would be to overthrow the Islamic regime because we would move backward okay. and not forward. The best uh, help that Trump and other Western leaders uh, which can uh, which can really give to Iranian people is first not to meddle uh, in Iranian affairs. To leave and Iran second, alone. Yeah, leave Iran alone. Washington is unlikely to ease the pressure. That's why Iran is turning for help to European powers who co-signed the nuclear deal. Europe is devising a plan to sidestep U.S. sanctions and deliver to Iran economic benefits guaranteed in the nuclear deal. According to the UK's ambassador to Iran, Rob McCare. No um, magic bullet here, but in the area of uh, protecting European companies uh, through issues like the blocking statute, which is a piece of EU legislation, uh, in increasing the mandate of the European Investment Bank, in work through export credit uh, facilities and work uh, looking at special purpose financial vehicles, uh, and of course uh, also in engaging with the US administration. Uh, where there's been a very senior level engagement to talk about uh, what exclusions would apply to U.S. sanctions. In many ways, uh, the U.K. saving the nuclear deal means taking on Washington. I wouldn't put it in those terms. I, th I think you know the, the United States is our, is our oldest and closest ally, and there are a lot of things that we continue to agree with uh, the U.S. on when it comes to Iran policy. Obviously, we have one major disagreement at the moment, which is over the JCPOA, the nuclear deal. Uh, an agreement which uh, the UK has been absolutely clear that we are signed up to and committed to. Even if Europe helps, many analysts say Iran's economy will continue to suffer under U.S. sanctions. Many here say the key to resolving the crisis is not to escalate tensions with the U.S., but instead to enact long overdue reform to address decades-long mismanagement of the economy by Iran's leadership. All people are uh demanding is like uh, fighting corruption, uh, making, uh, you know, uh, economy improve. That's what people want. Until then, it's harder days ahead for members of Rising Star and millions of Iranians stuck in a spiraling economy. As the street band finished with Michael Jackson's They Don't Care About Us, Many here are wondering if and when someone will. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Reza Seah in Tehran.